The Harry Potter franchise has transcended time and has amassed a major following since its release. Today we're going to go back in time to look at the Harry Potter series games released since their first in 2001 up until today. As we begin to look back into the old Harry Potter games that include Lego versions of games, games for Quidditch, games that represent the movies, all of these games will be covered here and we're going to go through a list of every one of these in the evolution of the Harry Potter franchise. The first game in the Harry Potter franchise is Lego Creator Harry Potter. This game is a construction and management simulation video game based on the 2001 Harry Potter film Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which is otherwise known as the Sorcerer's Stone in the US. This game was available on Windows and shows to be the earliest Lego Harry Potter game available. In this game you were able to customize the Hogwarts grounds, build your own Lego character, and fight enemies although the graphics obviously were pretty bad considering it was a 2001 game in 2001 this may have been excellent but this was a great start to the harry potter franchise and anybody that remembers playing this game bravo to you because i was barely born Again in 2001, the next game, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, was released. It was released for all kinds of PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, and Windows. The game's core gameplay is straightforward, taking control of Harry. The player explores Hogwarts castles and grounds. Throughout the course of the game, the player will encounter events that tie into the storyline of this movie. Filling the gaps between these events are various classes where the player will learn how to fly a broomstick and learn new spells for combating bosses, among other things. This game is the first kind of roam around Harry Potter game where you get to roam around Hogwarts and find Birdie Bot's beans within chess. There's also other small quests and missions that you encounter throughout the game. This is a true classic as it was Basically, legitimately the first brand new Harry Potter game, putting aside the Lego game. It was amazing at its time. In 2002, the next game, Lego Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, was created. This was the next Lego creator game, followed up in 2002 from 2001. As you can see, the graphic difference is fairly improved. It definitely looks a lot better. This is one of two Harry Potter games released this year, and the difference between the 2002 Lego creator version and the 2001 Lego creator version I think is a pretty drastic difference. In this game, it's another Lego creator game that's a management and build game. You can create your Lego character, build all kinds of things in the game, and use it to create things around Hogwarts, as well as fight enemies during the game. Again, this was a big improvement. In 2002, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets was released. This was released for PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, and Windows. This game again follows the movie. This game is full of mysteries and puzzles and things that you have to figure out, a multitude of spells that you're going to need to know in order to unlock chess, pass by certain areas, and defeat certain enemies. There are also plenty of hidden puzzles throughout the game. This is one of the first real very fun Harry Potter games, considering all the different things you could do compared to the past game. This game was a true classic. Next, in 2003, Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup was released for PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, Windows, and Game Boy Advance. In this game, the player competes for the Hogwarts Inner House Quidditch Cup for one of the Hogwarts house teams, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, or Slytherin. Each house team is represented by its seeker. Each seeker is a specific character from the books. While playing this game, you get to experience all the fun habits of Quidditch and play against other teams. This is one thing everyone definitely wants implemented in a new Harry Potter game. As I remember playing this, it was extremely fun. You get to play Quidditch and compete against people. Dream come true. In 2003, The Philosopher's Stone, the 2003 version, was released based on the 2001 film of The Sorcerer's Stone. The versions of this game on different platforms differ greatly from each other and do not follow the same level of structures of gameplay with somewhat varying stories as well. So someone on Windows or PlayStation or GameCube are not going to have the same experience in this game. The games were just built differently that way. The 2003 version of this game was built between a combat system and a partial platformer. In 2004, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was released. The game follows Harry Potter along with Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger as they return to Hogwarts. Prisoner Sirius Black has escaped the wizard prison Azkaban and is supposedly ready to attack Harry in Hogwarts. The game focuses on this main storyline, has a ton of puzzles and things to solve within the game, treasure and items that you can find, and was definitely a big improvement over the 2001 and 2002 versions. Considering the new features and just the overall look and feel of the game, it definitely feels much more nuanced. 2005. 
Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire was released. This game very much mirrors the movie where Harry's name is put into the Goblet of Fire and he must complete a bunch of different challenges and beat other people in order to advance and win. Here you can see the introduction for Professor Moody. The combat system in this game was definitely upped and advanced. It was much more open world like than the previous games, although at this time there was still really no such thing. You can see here different mechanics from swimming mechanics, different view options for certain missions, and just overall character development was a lot higher with this game. The extent of the combat system was definitely improved. In 2007, they released Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. As these games progress, they get better and better in quality, but they all consecutively pretty much follow the movies. This is one game that I actually haven't played, but when looking at the footage and being able to see that you could be Dumbledore in certain instances, and the way the combat system was changed to be more direct on and fighting targets, here you can see Harry casting on multiple enemies at once within a solid story as well. In 2009, The Half-Blood Prince was released. Again, slowly but surely, more quality improvements. This game obviously included many different missions and story quests from the original movie. Cutscenes in this game were definitely way improved compared to previous games. You can see here the cutscene where Dumbledore finally dies. And here where the combat system goes to a health-based system that you can see on screen, where each cast against an enemy basically takes one point of life away, which plays much better with boss fights and intense fights against enemies. The graphics improvements, again, continuing to improve and looking much more and more like the movies themselves. In 2010, the release of Lego Harry Potter years one through four, this was officially the best game on this list for me, blows prior games out of the water. Before this, the last game they had released was in 2002, and this game is so much better. You can see the content, the graphics on this game, considering it's a Lego game, looks fairly great. I mean, this game looks like a 2022 Legos game. I mean, it looks really, really good. All the colors are great. The game content, was great. The story was great. The overall playability of this game was just really, really good. I myself have definitely played this game and loved it. 2010, Deathly Hollows Part 1. This was definitely a big upgrade from the previous game in Half-Blood Prince. You can see the 3D character models in this game were definitely upped and the movement and ability to walk around sort of bigger open map was a good benefit. The cutscenes and everything else in this game looks way better than any Harry Potter game done before it. Not even close. This is another big video game year where things just started to increase exponentially, it seems like, in terms of graphic and potential video game content. As these games follow the storyline and the pressure amongst releasing a movie and a video game come by, they get these done pretty quickly. In 2011, Deathly Hallows Part 2 was released. This game was made very similar to Deathly Hallows Part 1. The graphics and everything else in terms of an upgrade from Deathly Hallows Part 1, very, very similar. Once we made that big jump to Deathly Hallows Part 1, that was a big improvement. So this game was about the same game, just a different story. The combat system here definitely seems pretty advanced for games at this stage in this year. And as you can see, the cutscenes here actually do look really good and actually look a lot better. So as you fight Voldemort, there are different combat mechanics, but I would say the improvement from this game to the last game was not that great. In 2011, Lego Harry Potter years five through seven was released. Just like the Lego Harry Potter games year one through four, this game again was phenomenal. I mean, you can tell just by looking at the game, it looks clean, it looks fun. The colors contrast, the game just looks good. Again, another positive game that I've played. To be honest, I don't think you could really tell the difference between this Legos game and a Lego game made in 2022 very much. I mean, it was that advanced for a Legos game, especially when you go all the way back and compare it to the Lego creator games. This game was definitely another A plus in terms of playability, in terms of graphics, in terms of everything. I would still play this today. In 2012, they released Harry Potter for Connect. If any of you aren't aware, Connect is essentially the device that allows you to move and do actions essentially in a video game. It's the older version version of VR. You can see here in the game where Hermione jumps, generally that would require a jump from the Kinect user in real life. There was a lot of movement in this game, so this was one of the first games since it was Kinect where you could actually feel somewhat attached to the game. So in order to cast your spells, you would have to stick your hand out and cast your spells. In order to jump, you would need to jump. 
and this is how you would play the game, so it was definitely much more involved and immersive. In 2012 and 2013, The Book of Spells and Potions was released. These were two separate games. Book of Spells was one, and Book of Potions was another game. This was another sort of game where you could have a wand, and you would interact with a digital book in order to play the game. So what would happen is you would use your wand, do different things along the book, and advance the story or whatever you were trying to do. As you can see, that wand going through that digital image of that book, that's the actual wand that someone is holding to play this game. And then with all that weight from 2001 to 2023 when we get Hogwarts Legacy, this is going to be the biggest jump in video game franchise almost ever. Why? Because a game that was made in 2012 11 years ago is not even going to come close to competing with a game made in 2023. But I think that's the thing that makes everything around Hogwarts Legacy so exciting is we haven't seen a Harry Potter game in a very long time. Not only that, the difference in quality from this game to the last game that people remember and was so nostalgic is a huge jump. This game is going to mark a new record for the Harry Potter franchise. And all the reasons that that game is going to be so great are listed in this video right here. Hope you guys enjoyed this evolution of the Harry Potter franchise and everything that has happened since 2001 in terms of Harry Potter games. If you guys want to keep seeing Harry Potter content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. I'll be dropping it very, very frequently until Hogwarts Legacy arrives in February. Thank you guys very much. Stay classy.